G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. In this video, we're going to continue looking at matrices. Particularly, what we're going to be having a look at is this the identity matrix, what that is. And then also, we're going to have a look at inverse matrices and this thing called the determinant, how we can use that to work out the inverse matrix. So sit back and enjoy. We'll get to those right now. All right, so let's start out by having a look at these guys, the identity matrix. Now, you're probably aware in normal mathematics, if you multiply a number by one, it doesn't change that number. For example, three times one is equal to three. Is there a similar situation that occurs with matrices? For example, say I had this square matrix here, three, zero, four, two. Is there a matrix that I could multiply this by, a similar two by two matrix, that would mean that the result I would get would be exactly the same. That is to say, three, zero, four, two. In fact, by multiplying, it would remain unchanged. There is, and this is called the identity matrix. The identity matrix is a matrix that you can multiply another matrix by, and that matrix will remain unchanged, as in the case that we have here. And it's important to note that only square matrices can have an identity matrix. So what is the identity matrix for this one here? Well, the pattern's the same each time. For this particular two by two uh, matrix, the identity matrix is as follows, one, zero, zero, one. And if you were to go and work this out and multiply through, you would find out that this didn't change. In fact, identity matrices are really, really easy to remember. I'm gonna show you them for the basic square matrices. So for a one by one matrix, the identity matrix looks like this. It's just a single row, single column with a one there. For a two by two matrix, well, we just saw what it is there. And you can see here, it's a two by two and it's a one, zero, zero, one. As you can see here, the ones from the lead up here go down in a diagonal. We can go to a three by three square matrix where we actually have the following identity matrix here. Now it's gonna be three by three and you follow this leading one, one, one down, the rest are all going to be zeros. And you can sort of see the pattern that's developing there. No surprise, if we were to now draw a four by four identity matrix, it looks like this. You can probably guess what it's going to be. It's gonna be four columns and four rows with a one, a one, a one, a one, and the rest are all going to be zeros, where this diagonal lead goes down like this. Okay, and this is the identity matrix. If you were to multiply another three by three matrix with this, it would remain unchanged. So now we've gone through and we've had a look at what the identity matrix is, we can move on to look at the inverse matrix and how to work that out. So just a quick recap here about the identity and how this is related to now the inverse. So once again, the identity of a number. Say for instance for three here, the identity is what number you multiply three by so it doesn't change here. So three multiplied by its identity of one, <laughs> well, that's pretty simple there, all right? So with a matrix, the identity was what number you multiply this matrix by, so it didn't change in the answer. And that was one, zero, zero, one for a square two by two matrix. Cool, and that's what the actual identity was. All right, nothing surprising there. So now we're gonna have a look at the inverse. The inverse is what number you would multiply, say this three by here, this number by, to get to the identity, okay? So what number would you multiply by three to get to one, the identity, and that is the inverse of three. The inverse of three is one third. And it's called the inverse because if you were to get three here in its fractional form, three over one, and you were to invert it, that is to turn it upside down, you would get one third. So the inverse of three is one third. The inverse of two is a half. So what is the inverse of this matrix here? I'll break the bad news to you. It's not just a matter of turning this upside down. We have to go through and work this out using a bit of a process. Okay, so that's what we're going to have a look at now. So how do you work out the inverse of a matrix? It's not very difficult. We just need to follow a few simple steps. So imagine that we had this matrix here that we're trying to work out. And I'm going to actually denote it. It's a two by two matrix. And I'm going to denote it by using letters for the elements. So for the elements, we have A, B, C, and D. So the first step we do is we're going to work out something here which is called the determinant. It's pretty simple to work out. What we do is we multiply A by D. So A multiplied by D, and from that we're going to subtract B multiplied by C. So B multiplied by C. And that works out the determinant. 
So I'll give you an example here. Say we had this uh, matrix here, which is B, and it had the following uh, elements, 3, 0, 2, and 1. We would first just work out the determinant here. So it's as follows. The determinant of B, which is equal to A multiplied by D, which is 3 multiplied by 1, 3 multiplied by 1 here, which is equal to 3. And from this, we're subtracting B multiplied by C. B multiplied by C, which is 0, multiplied by 2, which is 0. So the determinant here would be equal to 3. And it's worth noting really, really well here, at this stage, if we get an answer of 0 here, it means that the matrix we're talking about does not have an inverse. The second step now is we are just going to now directly work out the inverse. So this is what we do. The inverse of A is equal to the following. It's 1 over that determinant, okay? Whatever that determinant we just worked out there, it's 1 over the top of that. And what we do here is we now do a bit of swapping around. D goes up here, negative B, uh, negative C, and A. So we just swap around the elements. A and D have swapped positions, and B and C have just become negatives. So once you've got that filled in, you multiply it by 1, over the determinant here. And hey presto, you have worked out your inverse matrix. Pretty simple, right? What about we do a couple of examples? Okay, so we've just swapped those around for a bit more space. Let's go through a few examples. So we're going to start off with the matrix of D. D has the following elements in it. Two, two, three, and four. What we're going to be working out? Well, we're going to be working out the inverse matrix of D. So let's go through and do that. The first step, we work out the determinant. The determinant of D. Pretty simple to work out. We just follow this idea, AD subtract BC. So let's do that. AD, that's 2 multiplied by 4. That's equal to 8. And from that, we're subtracting BC. 2 multiplied by 3. 2 multiplied by 3 is equal to 6. So 8 minus 6 gives us the determinant of 2. The determinant for D so far is equal to 2. The second step is now we're going to work out the actual inverse matrix here by following this idea. So the first part you can see we have 1 over the determinant. So 1 over the determinant, the determinant is equal to 2, so we start off with 1 over 2. Opening up these brackets here for the matrix, what we get is we're going to do that bit of switch around we have here. As you can see, A and D have swapped sides. So A and D, let's swap those from up here. So let's swap these guys, two and four swap positions. So we end up with a four up here and a two up here. And as you can see for B and C, they just become negatives. So two becomes negative two and three becomes negative three. We close that off and now we can solve this. So let's go through and now do a bit of scalar multiplication. Half multiplied by four. Well, let's start putting these in. Half multiplied by four is equal to two. Half multiplied by negative 2 is equal to negative 1. Half multiplied by negative 3 is negative 3 over 2. And half multiplied by 2 is equal to 1. And there you have it. We have the inverse matrix of D. Now, I'm only going to do it for this one, but remember what the inverse matrix is. So let's just quickly check this, because what we said a bit earlier is if we get the matrix of D and we multiply it by the inverse of D, it should be equal to the identity matrix. So let's just check that out. So first off, we have D here, which is equal to 2, 2, 3, and 4. And we would multiply this by the inverse, which is 2, negative 1, negative 3 over 2, and a 1 there. And this should be equal to the identity matrix. So now let's just quickly multiply and see if this is the case. So to get the top left up here, we go 2, multiplied by 2, which is 4, and we're going to add to that 2 multiplied by negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2 times 2 is equal to negative 3. So 4, take away 3, is equal to 1. To get the top right here, we have 2 multiplied by negative 1, which is negative 2, and 2 multiplied by 1, which is 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. To get the bottom left here, we have 3 multiplied by 2, which is 6, and we have 4 multiplied by negative, well, 1 and a half, which is negative 6. So 6 and negative 6 gives us 0. And then finally, to get the bottom right, we have 3 multiplied by negative 1, which is negative 3. 
and we have 4 multiplied by 1. So negative 3 plus 4 is equal to 1. So that is the identity matrix, and it means that we've successfully worked out the inverse matrix there. All right, what about a few more examples? So what about now we have the matrix, which is B, and it has the following elements. 2, 3, 2, 3. And what we're going to be working out is the inverse matrix of B there. So first off, we work out the determinant. Pretty simple, the determinant of B here. Now, as you can see, AD minus BC. So we're going to be getting these guys, 2 times 3, and subtracting 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is equal to 6, and 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So we're subtracting that, and that is equal to 0. Now, just a little thing here. As I said before, if the determinant is equal to 0, that means there is no, there is no inverse of B. There is no B inverse. Okay, so you can stop right there. None is possible. All right, cool. Let's get on to the next question. Okay, to one last example. We have the matrix, which is C, and it has the following elements in it. 0, 3, 1, and 4. And obviously what we're going to be working out is the inverse matrix here. So first step, we work out the determinant. The determinant of C. Now what's that equal to? Well, as usual, AD minus BC. AD minus BC, let's do that. So AD is 0 multiplied by 4. That's going to be 0. And from that, we're taking away 3 multiplied by 1. 3 multiplied by 1 is equal to 3. So the determinant is equal to negative 3. Cool. Now we go to part 2 here, where we're going to work out the inverse matrix. So C to the negative 1, and what that is equal to. So the first part, as you can remember here, is we have 1 over the determinant. So we have 1 which is over the determinant of negative 3. So we're going to end up with negative 1 over 3. Cool. And now we do a bit of the old swapping around. Once again, the A and the D swap here. So these guys here swap. The 4 goes up here and the 0 goes down here. So 4 and 0, and these other guys just become negative. Negative 1, negative 3. Awesome. All right, we can now go through and expand this. So what do we get when we do this? You can see this is going to be c to the negative 1, our final answer. So what is negative a third times 4? Well, that's going to be negative 4 over 3. We have negative 3 multiplied by a third. That's going to be 1. We have negative 1 multiplied by a third. That's going to be 1 third. And 0 multiplied by negative a third is equal to 0. Cool. Is that the answer you got? I hope so. So that's how we work out the inverse matrix. As you can see, it's not overly difficult. Just follow those steps. Now, in future videos, we are going to be looking at bigger and better matrices. So stay tuned for those. If you like this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe. And you can consider becoming a patron. Thank you to my subscribers and my patrons. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.